Bear with me. So some last minute adjustments, but uh, I think we're fine now. So welcome to Meshman Studio and the Mori channel. So we're gonna have a short live stream here today. Continue with asset and then um, yeah. If you're new new here, consider subscribing. Meshman Studio and the Mori channel is about VFX, cinematography, texturing, look dev, render man, and we're gonna. Yeah, gonna venture into other topics later on, but right now my live stream is about texturing a asset in Mori and it's node based because that's something that's close to my heart. That's something I'm really encouraging people to use because the flexibility is uh, much greater in the node graph. So yeah, uh, it's the future and um, hopefully it's the way forward as well. So yeah. Um, without further ado, let's dive into texturing in Mori and using the null graph. And first off, damn good coffee and hot. So I left, I left this asset in some kind of a state. Let's see what I was up to. Uh, howdy. So we have, uh, we have people in the chat already. Um, let's see here. So let's take this environment light and just turn off the background temporarily here. Okay. So I want to, first off, I'm gonna just examine Let's take the shader and see what what we have. Slava, welcome back. I'm just gonna turn on. Yeah, well, I not just turn on the background so it makes sense. Okay, so I was I was working on like the dirt and that kind of thing. I was upgrading this, the top here. Um, Vincent, hello. And uh, yeah, so I got, I got some stuff to do, I guess. I'm, I think I wanna continue to work on the rub there. And why not also take another pause on the dirt and the scratches. So yeah, let's let's take a look at the dirt. I wanna experiment. Actually, I'm gonna do it. If I do it here on the actual dirt material. It's gonna, um, what's this? I have a brightness look up there. That's interesting. Let's turn it off and see what that does. So that's on my uh, know that, let's see, I, I think I will, uh, Take a look at my shader. I think I have everything live and my bump and everything. That's kind of uh, taking it a bit extreme, maybe. Um, just give me a second, see if it's updates here. Then I'm gonna go into my shader. Turn off the bump, it's gonna be much faster there. Um, okay, so my brightness, okay, that's interesting. So 
so I was leveling the actual um, dirt mask there is, uh, when I apply it to get some more coverage in the in the mask so I could essentially apply that let's take my brightness look up here my grade if I just copy this one so let's see if I just hit the D button I can see what that does so I I, I just lift um, the middle tones there so let's see yeah uh, I have a slight curve there in the in the dark areas so if I copy this one go to my bookmark so I have a shortcut so, and go to dirt mask and let's see so we have um, I guess it's this one I'm gonna do a transmitter now, but oh, I have it here uh, actually. Let's paste it there. So that's the final before I send it to that to the like the comp. Let's go up to the comp and disable that grade node here now I don't want two of those let's see which one this is connected to it's not connected to anyone there it's gonna jump back because I started to use the transmitter uh, um, nodes now because it's it's out uh, the new um, extension pack as well and I like the transmitting my nodes better because it's um, it's actually let's take away this bookmark node there make a new one as well it's the legacy bookmark one over here This one has a new color code, so it's easier to distinguish. It doesn't look like a bake point. Um, so, um, just redoing that. Can just place it anywhere, essentially. So we we have a uh, yeah tr transmitted there already. I'm not sure what I was doing there. Let's go back to a call out. Just gonna remove this one, make a new bookmark. I like the new bookmarks better. Maybe make something less pink in the backdrop. Okay, so I want to experiment here. I'm just gonna insert a merge node and make a uh, completely white paint node. But I'm just gonna mask something out here to test my dirt. So I wanna just take away dirt completely on on some places here too okay so on this one is now not yeah it's 100% white now so I have to multiply it so let's see so my rubber when I remove this completely temporarily to see what kind of roughness value I have on the actual rubber there without any dirt turn it 
temporarily and let's look through the shader now. So it's kind of shiny, so yeah, that's it's a rubber E. Could probably make it even shinier just to uh, help it stand out the dirt there. Whoops. So I'm gonna go to the rubber. Let's see, the rubber. Albedo color is gonna decrease it slightly. Oop, I wish I had the new Mori 4 uh, color um, picker. This one is so limited, uh, the one that's in 3.3, it's um, So we have a question here. Um, hold on. Um, so, uh, you channel paint all in one graph or two and more layers. I'm not entirely sure what you mean there. Uh, can you clarify that? What do you mean? Do you mean if I paint on all channels at once or I mean you you can't do that in Mari, so you have to set it up like I have with masks and materials like this, but um, I'm not sure if that's what you mean. Okay, so the roughness, let's take a look at my roughness. Which one is the rubber? There you have the roughness. Just gonna go in here and Decrease it slightly. Okay. So I have a bake point known here, so I'm just gonna disable it temporarily here. Pete Patterson, hello. Okay, so there, it's a little um, shinier the actual rubber material there now. It's because I, uh, in Random Man, for example, um, white values is, is like uh, a Lambert and, and the black values is like super shiny. So, so this is the amount of uh, how rough the material. So. 50% that's a very broad spec and then one if I put it to one it's gonna be like yeah, no speckler at all it's just gonna be diffuse kind of contribution uh, so it's gonna dial it down a bit and also I saw Let's take this away temporarily. Make it just a tad darker there. So if I go back now and just disable the dirt, let's go back to call out here and just take this that's all the dirt Let's 
go back to the rubber and I'm just gonna rebake my bake points there. Austin PP in the house, hello. So let's see, I'll be the texture in paint layer. You have created the layer, so no graph stack. Uh, so, uh, okay, let's let's dive into, let's take a brief uh, rundown of my, uh, how this is set up if you haven't been here for um, the previous um, episodes. I'm just gonna let this uh, bake node do its job first. And I'm just gonna take this one as well. So bear with me. A few seconds here and I'm gonna bake this down and um, I'm gonna take a quick rundown of my uh, my setup for people that hasn't been on the live stream since the beginning uh, so what I've done I have um, I kind of have created materials in a sense and uh, I'm thinking uh, first I create the base material that's the in the bottom is the, the metal everything is have a metal in the bottom so I define my materials using um, like uh, groups kind of like uh, backdrops so each material has its own backdrop so I have one material I'm gonna show it soon when this one is baked here okay so there we go uh, let me just so, so this is my entire setup so I, I start off here with uh, my metal material so I have a it's, this is very basic essentially this is I, def I have here um, my color for uh, the metal and in my case it's kind of black because it's a metal and uh, the shader i use in render man has two um it's um it's a pixel surface and it has two modes you can either have a uh, a mode called uh, artistic or physical in my case i use the artistic so then you have two sliders you have uh, you have um face and edge tint so i set the face and edge tint so i i kind of dev the material um in random man and just transfer the values and here we have the roughness and uh, and we have a bump as well so this this is my setup for making Okay, the bump is doesn't contain that much because it's it's um, kind of a flat. Um, so I have metal. I have uh, the painted metal, and that's similar. It covers the whole object with the color for the painted uh, metal, the two uh, face and edge. Uh, reflectivity values the roughness and my bump and I share all of this using uh, in my case radio nodes and the radio node is in uh, more terms an extension pack thing so now you have a transmitter so what I can do here if I do a transmitter and say I wanna broadcast this painted color I can connect it to my transmitter I can hook up somewhere else 
Okay, I want to use this color somewhere. So I make a radio node. I uh, connect it and take my. Let's see. I have to uh, name it first. I didn't do that. So painted call. Okay, here we have a radio node. I connect to painted call. And then I have access to the painted call. And this is where I add everything to, together. So I have radio nodes for my uh, base material. Then I add radio nodes for my painted and then I use mask to mask them in. So I have a mask here for, for this, for example, this is the, the base where I have the metal and the painted on top. So everything is still metal where it's black now. Then I have another material that I add and that's where I apply the rubber. It's only where the rubber is using masks. And then we have the alloy and that's the thing that's on the gun. So it's kind of a, like a metal, but it's more like a uh, processed in some kind of chemical, chemical bath or something. So it has a slight uh, tint to it and another surface quality of the metal. And then we have another material here and everything is all defined in simple, simple materials over here. So I have them stacked in metal, painted in the order kind of like they've, and everything is driven with uh, radio nodes. So there's a command, if I go to misc, toggle radio nodes, it's gonna be a lot of uh, like, um, can you see those lines going crisscross from, from down here up to there? But I can hide those again. So, so yeah, uh, that's kind of the ways. And then I add, uh, I have another layer for decals. And uh, last but not least, the dirt. And I define the dirt, for example, uh, it's quite uh, extensive. The most, most of the work uh, is in the actual dirt mask, where I add stuff together, make like different materials here. I start, start quite easily here with the occlusion, I level it. And I add uh, like a tree prana projection to break up the, the response, add stuff to it with different mini comps. Here's, uh, I think I add stuff with curvature there. Uh, something else. I think I use uh, another occlusion, but with another distance and so on. I add and remove stuff stripped it. I have a special mini comb for my rubber. So that's where I'm gonna take away some of the stuff. Add oil on top and then I send this to my uh, mask up there. Yeah, so, so I kind of define materials but I mostly use the mask to dictate where they are. I don't. I haven't really painted anything specific, projected in in a sense. Uh, try to stay procedural as long as possible because it's easier to change stuff this way. And uh, the texture becomes more. It's a little intricate in the beginning, but um, the process makes it. Uh, much more lightweight um, in a sense because I don't have to duplicate I share stuff as uh, long as I can so yeah okay but yeah that was a brief rundown of my uh, of the setup for uh, for this for people that 
wasn't involved in the beginning. It looks a little messy now, I could be a little more tidy. Maybe I should do that someday. Uh, sometimes there's nodes <laughs> hanging around that I'm not really sure if they are needed. So, um, yeah. So I started to hook up um, transmitter nodes in the middle of. I, I started with one, this the old legacy radio nodes, and then uh, mid of this project. I got hold of Jens Kaffitz uh, transmitter nodes and uh, those are really great. But uh, I wish I had them from the beginning, then uh, my comp would probably look a bit different. But yeah, I've, I've started to hook up my ISO maps. So that's something I also, when I start to texture something, I tend to make just isolation mask for materials or parts I need I want to access and then I have them here and whatever I need something I can just hook up a radio node and connect to it I don't have to be uh, it's, it's easy to share this way and it's also good to have uh, when you're gonna um, in uh, a look dev environment you will often get asked can I get this mask or this mask can you export this on its own so we can grade something uh, independently from the look dev side so it's also good to have everything all the eyes so you can think of uh, in a some kind of a structured uh, place where you can export them later on probably not gonna do it here because this is just for a uh, recreation purpose and education so I'm not gonna do that heavy well I, I will do actually will do uh, I looked at pass on this later on in random and I think I will do it in both random and for Maya and and actually I'm I'm beginning to learn katana and I have a license here at home with, with katana so I'm I will probably set it up in katana as well just an easy way um, so yeah that's gonna come later on um, I. Okay, so we have a question, is this linear? Everything I do is linear. Um, it's not ACES, it's nuke default uh, in this, but it's the same. If I go to settings, it's nuke default here. So, um, uh, in Mori 4, they have a preset for ACES as well. Okay, so let's dive into my what I was doing. I was looking into the rubber. So yeah, I want to do something about that rubber. So I guess I have to do it then. Uh, dirt mask rubber. Okay. So let's see what. Okay, I add the stuff there. Hold on, there's a door open and it just gives me. Yeah, so. So I have blotches and stuff, and I guess I have to to uh, remove those as well. So let's see, there's blotches coming in already before here somewhere. Yeah, uh, that's the drips. So I could, I could share this one, yeah, I think I'm just gonna do it like this. Uh, 
and now I need the the, the iso rubber to just isolate this part this part so that's good because I have a transmitter now so I just make a radio node and I don't have to hunt around anymore because I just define a radio node and connect it to my iso rubber so there we have it it's a mask all ready to use and I want to use okay so we we have here we have a lot of uh, grunge hanging around and on top of the tires but I want to take away the some of this using this mask so I'm gonna multiply it and see how that goes but yeah that's kind of as I only painted on the actual uh, tire I guess I don't really need this one so yeah let's see if I make a histogram scan just to, to crunch it a bit to see what happens I think I'll try that one. Just gonna see here now in the end. Okay, so we have a bait point. Let's delete that so we can see what happens. So now we know that that is working. So hold on. Uh, so we have a question here. First off, hi, it's Tigran. And secondly, uh, a question in the chat. Um, so uh, it says, so in Mario 3.3, you don't work at all with Aces. Yes, we work in Aces. I don't work in Aces here at home, but in, uh, I guess m most of the studios, ACES and ACES CG is a very common. So you, you can work with a lot of different uh, color uh, workflows in Mari. It's just um, what it ships with default in Mari 3.3. I guess the ones that you have to choose from here. Yeah, you have ACES as well. Um, Nuke Default Aces, you SBI, that's uh, Sony Picture Share Image Works in house. I have never touched those. IFF, I have no idea where it is. So the Nuke Default is kind of, I think it's an, it's a good, good way to do it when you uh, don't really have any specific pipeline needs. Uh, like in my case, I just want to paint and it's a uh, linear so it works. It works good um, I guess when you have aces and aces CG That's kind of a linear. Uh, well, it's a linear workflow as well. So it's gonna be uh, How you set it up essentially Okay, so we remove some of that there Let's go and check it out. So yeah, uh, Asus CG, uh, it's very common in VFX. Just gonna take away my mask here. So 
I could work on that breakup mask. Let's do something. Just isolate the tires here. Dirt mask. Okay, so I'm just gonna um, look at the, the actual mask itself now. Let's scoot this over a bit. Let's take something with some directionality. Okay, so I have to crunch this up a bit so it so it works. So let's level this. Actually, I uh, do it in the contrast. to save me now. Gonna take away some of these so I get some streaking in some areas. question about color spaces again so I'm working um, in 16-bit linear color space so what that mean is when I have a, a uh, something like a um, an image for example that's sRGB it's gonna linearize it if I don't tell it not to do that. And that's kind of, for example, if I now here take any image from the image manager here, that's 8-bit. We have this um, color space setting sRGB down here. So um, let's take anything out here and turn off the source grade. Take something that has more 
some kind of range. For example, my... Oh, actually, let's open the image. Take this. So we have the color settings here that's saying automatic sRGB. So it's uh, taking my sRGB image when, when I paint with this, it's gonna linearize it before it um, project it. So I can turn off the color management now and it's gonna go dark. So this is the linear linearized version out of this image. And if I turn this off and say linear, for example, it's gonna go bright again because now it's untouched. It, it thinks this is a linear image now. Um, we have these rules here under color settings. So the rules is for um, 8 bit data, and in my case, this is an 8 bit image. It's gonna default to think that this is an sRGB image and therefore it linearize it and I bring it back with my LUT that's an sRGB LUT so it looks correct but what I'm painting with is essentially if I turn off the color management this is what's gonna be written down and this is the linearized data um, that's gonna be ending up being inside of my channel so more is always now striving to get everything linearized so um, anything you paint will gonna end up linearized if you have set it up correctly uh, there's a few options where you can say raw or something and that's gonna bypass everything it's similar to setting raw in um, in nuke for example you have a, a raw option and then that's gonna bypass kind of all your uh, color management and that's some generally it's something you don't want to do if you don't know what you're doing uh, so yeah let's take So did that make sense with uh, the color management and stuff? So all what I do is also all my channels is 16-bit. Uh, just to be sure. If I make something if, like a paint node or anything, I go. Usually, I set it up to 16-bit half. And if it's um, scalar data like bump masks I, I usually set it to scalar but this is is not if if you would not set this to scalar it's not really an issue because you're still gonna paint with linear values so um, this is just for preview purposes um, so yeah Just gonna take some of those really dark ones just to break it up a bit. Ok, 
Okay, so that's my drips. Let's take a look here in the end. Then we have the rubber. It's gonna go up. So this is what it looks when you turn off color management. Everything is gonna go kind of dark. And this is how it looks with color management on. So this is linear. This, this is what I will export out from Ori. It's the linear representation of the colors and the data this is just to see like a uh, preview how it's gonna look like when it's rendered and a LUT is displayed on it so in a production environment you will probably have a lot of different view transforms like show LUTs or uh, um, very rarely actually sRGB that's kind of uh, something you have to look for. Uh, so you have uh, different view transforms for uh, shows and other stuff usually in the view transform. Um, so yeah. Okay, so let's see here. We have some values there. I guess this one really needs an So some of this comes from, uh, I guess it's the dirt mask earlier from my occlusion. So I think I have to, to take away that actually. So in the beginning here, I add stuff with occlusion. In my case there, it's bad business for the tire. So I kind of have to mask it off. So let's see. Yeah, I could probably mask it off here. ISO rubber. At least to a degree here. looks now that's okay let's look further up here so the general there do I yeah, have a I add stuff here. Remove stuff. I could I could actually just 
remove stuff here now. Let's see. And take some of my I'm gonna take the actual the scuff brush there. So let's see, I could could moss this, I can do that essentially. Let's see. I kinda just wanna trigger the, the top surfaces on this one. Um, I wish I had an ISO for that. I could um, Could, could do a, a mini comp out of this to just trigger the top surfaces. Let's see. Multiply. So if I just do some crap here and uh, add a uh, my radio node here again. So hit the connect to ISO rubber. Oops. Wanna mask it in. Okay, so that's gonna be at least the top, uh, not gonna get beneath the actual, um, just gonna be on the actual rubber material. Just gonna do some clean up there. So this is what essentially what Mori does if you make a uh, layer mask or something. This is kind of uh, the setup it does behind the scenes. Let's see. Okay. Yeah. So now it's masking just um, the rubber, not on the actual uh, metal there.
Anyone try the the Mori 4 yet? In the chat. Uh, there was a new beta, open beta coming like the two days ago or something. I just I just installed it before I started this live stream actually, so I haven't really touched it yet. But yeah, there's a some new bug fixes and stuff. So let's just quickly copy this over to the other side now. Okay, let's see how that looks. Okay, so we still have a ah, I guess it's this one. It's a bake point here. Can delete that one. So that was old um, old textures. I was uh, probably simplifying or troubleshooting something so I just baked it so now yeah I think I will borrow those uh, streak marks there onto the other tires as well so just gonna go back to this one and copy it over because it's the same UV so I could uh, take this one copy so it's gonna be and this one and this one paste this this one copy yes okay let's take a look in the end here somewhere now my rubber So Pete Patterson says version 4 feels nice. Yeah, it has, uh, there's a lot of good potential. Uh, however, however, I can't use the <laughs> extension pack nodes. So it's gonna be, uh, I think I have to wait, wait until uh, I get the extension pack nodes um, before I start to use it in production. But yeah, I definitely um, uh, use it to learn the new UI and stuff like that. So Okay, so let's go back to my shader and take a look. Or I can uh, go to my... Call the last of the call nodes there. So yeah, I guess I have to, I'm not really happy with this large breakup, but it, it, at least it's a little better than before. I could apply another breakup pass on, on these ones as well. Let's look in uh, with the shader on. could actually bake the bump I'm gonna bake the bump here and 
then I can probably turn it off, turn it, turn it, it on. I mean, um, in the shader because the bump when when everything is live can be really expensive. Just give me a second. So Pete is here. Let's uh, let's look at his stuff here. So we have Pete here in the in the chat, and this is what he's been up to. Look, there's updates here even now. So um, let's go back from the beginning. So he's painting along, and um, here's his progress so far. And he has a much nicer layout here than, than I have. Mine looks chaotic, so I have to I have to do something about that maybe for the next time. Um, so here we have, um, I guess, a, some kind of procedural uh, mask going. And here's he started to add things together here. And a really nice, uh, I must say, uh, metal mask there or. Uh, metal breakup you've gone uh, way uh, heavier on the breakup than I have but uh, that's cool and we start to get some really heavy dirt here but that's cool I will probably balance the the um, the heavy parts versus the, the low parts it doesn't look patchy but otherwise, it's uh, it's really cool to see. Yeah, cool, Peter. Uh, it's gonna be interesting to see where this goes in the end. So let's see. Yeah. So now my bake is ready. Let's turn on the bump now in the shader. Let's see what happened now. My oh, I selected something there. And that's fast. Whoops. What did I connect to? Let's see. That's strange. Let's see. Something is wrong here uh, let's see node graph should be that that's my uh, shader gone wonky out that's strange I'm not sure what's going on um, it's definitely I'm not sure if my computer is overloaded or something shouldn't I mean it worked before let's let's kill this shader and see if it's
create a new one. I'm not sure what. So call out can be I have a lot of things live here. Let's bake one or two things. Let's do this. Go to uh, bake points, bake selected bake points. Should cycle through them now. So this is something that I hope uh, I have to check it out. Uh, the bake point speed is something that I'm hoping it's is fixed in uh, four. I'm gonna try it after this um, live stream, see if it's been improved. Because that's um, that's crucial for my workflow to have fast bake points. So in this 3.3 version, the bake point is quite a bit slower than baking it to a paint node. So yeah. Hold on with me, it's baking in the background. Um, what can we do in the meantime? Let's go over to the Q&A so people on the rerun can see some of the questions. So here we have some of the... So if you see this in the rerun, here's uh, some people that's been hanging out with me today and some of the questions that came up. I'm uh, currently baking, so yeah. It's squashing through. Let's take some uh, cool papers in the meantime. Let's go to Pixar papers. Um, Order by so if you search for Pixar papers, they have a really cool uh, collection of uh, publications and stuff. And um, this one is interesting. It, it explains uh, about the Pixar surface, how it's meant to be layered and and stuff like that. So if you use Renderman, this uh, paper here on the graphics Pixar. It's a nice resource. Just let it load here, it's a PDF. So it's baking in the background, so let's just check this out briefly. So it explains uh, all the different uh, material properties more in depth. So it's very interesting, especially when you texture for it, so you have a understanding what what the different inputs essentially is doing. So it explains the surface loads, the specular, what the different things when you connect them what, what it controls on this on the shader so this one is is interesting to dig through 
if you wanna be like have a sense of what what the different textures is gonna end up controlling in the shader. Let's go back to more and see how it goes. Oh shit, this one. Yeah, I think um, the big point's gonna take some time. So I guess it's gonna be for uh, for Sunday. I guess we're gonna wrap it now. It's it's over an hour, so it's Wednesday. So yeah, um, let's go to the end screen and. Um, Thanks for hanging out with me here today. And um, yeah, this is Meshman Studio and the Mori channel. And uh, I go live at Wednesday and Sunday. And um, yeah, Sunday is the, is the, the longest session. Wednesday is ar around an hour. And um, when I have the time after work, so it's around nine-ish. And Sunday is around uh, 1800 London time. So yeah, see you in the next live stream on sunday it's gonna be uh, around two hours so yeah subscribe and uh, see you bye bye